Hello everyone, I'm Lewis. I'm here to talk about Flynn. So I'm, I'm sure a lot of you haven't heard about Flynn. It's a new project. It's been around for about 18 months. And I've been working on it about three months now. And it's a, it's a project to help people deploy applications and databases containerized. So we'll start with this slide. What is Flynn? So Flynn describes itself as a set of components for solving ops. So I guess what do we mean by that? You know, what are we trying to solve? Uh, what are the issues with you know, ops? Um, so here are a few, few issues we think people have. Um, say you, you, know, you want to deploy an, a web app, uh, but to multiple servers. So at the moment, you, you might have your app locally, you, you write some tests, and you get it running, but you want to then deploy that application to multiple servers, and you want to be able to add servers and, and have it scale and things like that. How, like how would you do that at the moment? And you, you, know, you want to use containers and things like that. We want to solve that problem. And also upgrading dependencies. So for example, you, know, you, you deploy a, a Rails app, um, you, you want to upgrade the version of Ruby. Like how would you do that on your own servers? It's not, it's not straightforward how you manage that. Um, so obviously Docker is helping with this. So you know, with Docker you have an image that you can make locally and then deploy up to the cloud and things like that. So Flynn uses that to help you to upgrade dependencies seamlessly. And also, you know, say you want to deploy a fault-tolerant scalable database cluster. Like, how would you do that? You, know, you, you, want to do, you want to use Postgres in production, but you want it to be fault-tolerant. You want to be able to scale it up and down. You know, you're probably going to need a dedicated ops team to do that. And if you're just a developer trying to deploy your application, you, know, you, you probably don't want to have to worry about these things. So these are the problems Flynn is trying to solve by providing a framework to, to do these things. So here's a, a diagram of the, the infrastructure of Flynn. So basically, it's, it's split into two layers. So at the bottom layer, we have the, the job scheduling and service discovery layer. So this is similar to, to Docker, where you, you schedule um, Docker images, uh, jobs that will run under Flynn host. Well, we also have this service discovery. So if you're running a service uh, you know, under Flynn host, but then you want to know like, wh what other services are running in your cluster. At the moment, you might, want, you might use something like Puppet to, to know what, what's running. But here, we've got this discovery API where you can subscribe to services, see what services are online across the entire cluster. So that's the, that's the layer zero, low level kind of stuff. And then above that, you have layer one, which is application and database aware. So you have the, the jobs that just run at the bottom, but then you, we, Flynn deploys these services which know what it means to deploy certain applications, like what does it mean to deploy a Ruby app, or what does it mean to scale a Postgres cluster, things like that. That's what this lay, top layer handles. So if we start with uh, service discovery, so this is layer zero. So we have this daemon that runs on every node called discoverd, and it uses etcd uh, to, to, to communicate. So it provides service discovery, so if you want to know what service are running in your cluster, this is the daemon that will allow you to do that. It runs on every node, listens on port 1111, so it's predictable, you always know where it's running. You, you can always hit that service first and then find where all the other services are. Like I said, communicates via etcd, and it allows you to determine a leader for any given service. So how it does that is for every service that you register, it, each service gets a created index, and that's just a monotonically increasing number that for every service that comes online gets a new higher index. And the leader is always the, the online service with the lowest created index. So there's always, when you look at a set of services, every node will, will always agree on who is the leader because they'll all see the same <coughs> lowest created index. So this service discovery gives you a, the way of determining a, a specific service that is the leader. So you register a service um, by doing this. You, 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 know, you send your name, address, and attributes to the daemon every, say, five seconds. It's like a heartbeat. You just keep sending attributes to the service to say, I'm online. These are my details. So for instance, if you've got a Redis service, you will just post its name, Redis, its IP address, its port, and the password. So now we, you know, we're showing the password there because the idea of service discovery is all uh, private within the cluster. It's not a public API. You know, this is just for services under your control in the cluster they're running. So they should be able to connect to services. You know, it's all behind the firewall, so the passwords can be there. 
So there's probably no reason to use passwords and you should be handling them with firewalls. Um, and you should, can subscribe to services with this daemon. So you can say to the daemon, you know, for the Redis service, tell me when new processes start, tell me when processes stop, and then you can connect to those processes if you want to. Um, so also in layer zero, we have this Flynn host daemon, which runs again on every node, and it's responsible for starting and tracking the local jobs. So we're talking about correct containerized jobs. Um, so you, you, you'd ask Flynn host to run a job, it would use one of many backends. So at the moment, we have two backends called, one is Docker for running jobs, but there's also Libda LXC, which is another backend for running containers. And the idea with Flynn is it's a, it's a, a layer above Docker, so you can use different container backends. So for instance, you could run just pure VMs if you wanted to, rather than containers, and Flynn would work the same way. So the leader holds the state of the cluster, so you've got all these nodes in your cluster, but there's a leader determined by service discovery. Uh, and that, that leader is the one you'll speak to, to to request the jobs. It holds a state. You ask it to run a job, and then it will farm out to whatever other nodes are in the cluster and, and run that job. And then if that leader dies, then the other, serv the other services will notice that and say there'll be a, a natural new leader, and that will be the new leader who will then start requesting jo uh, receiving jobs and running them. So that's uh, layer zero at the bottom, the job scheduling service discovery. And then also in Flynn, there's this new layer uh, um, above that layer zero, which is layer one. So it consists of about 10 components. The idea of these components are all like loosely coupled services. So they're all services that you could probably just run on their own. If you wanted to run them for the, for the specific use, you can use them because uh, they're loosely coupled. And it provides a Heroku like git push for deploys. And that's just one thing that I'll show you today. It can, there's other ways to deploys, but this will be the most familiar, I think, for people. So part of the, this layer, we have a controller. So basically the controller is just uh, a place to store resources. So it's supposed that this JSON REST API, you can create and delete applications, you can create a release for an application, you can scale a release. So by scaling a release, you, you make a release and say this, rele this uh, release should have a, a worker process and a web process, but then you scale a release to say how many of those processes it should be running. Um, you can run custom jobs. So by custom jobs, you know, you've, you've deployed your application, you've scaled it, but you want to run a, you know, a bash console inside your application. You can just run a custom job inside there with all the environment variables and, and things there, so you can have a look around. Uh, you can stream job events, so if you want to know when, if your jobs are crashing and what the problems are, you can stream those job events straight from the controller and it'll tell you when, when things are happening. And you can also manage routes. I'll come to that, routes, when I talk about the router. Um, so you have Postgres is another part of layer zero, layer one, sorry. Um, so again, this publishes the credentials via the service discovery, like I showed in the example of Redis. Um, and it just runs, you know, it runs Postgres, as you might expect, but then it also exposes this REST API for, for managing things like creating users and databases. So we run Postgres, but if you want to create a new user, you don't have to connect to Postgres and you know, use SQL to create the user and grant tables and whatever. You can just use this REST convenience API to, to manage your Postgres uh, users and databases. And also, we, we have automatic fail failover by leader changes out of the box with Postgres and for any database that you can deploy to Flynn. Because basically, we use the leader election to say, you know, if, if, the first, if the Postgres that comes online is the leader, then it'll be the master Postgres server. Then any other servers that come online will notice there's already a Postgres server running, and they will just set themselves up as a replica. And then any new services, they'll keep being replicas of the master. And then when that leader dies, there'll be a new natural leader due to service discovery. And that, that service will see that and say, all right, well, now I'm the master. And all the other services will see that as well and start connecting to that master. So there's this automatic failover just provided by the service discovery for any kind of database. And we use it for Postgres here. Um, so we have a scheduler. So the scheduler is basically responsible for actually scaling an app's processes. So when you create a release and you, and you scale it via the controller, it just sticks things in Postgres. But then the scheduler actually n subscribes to changes in Postgres, sees those changes and acts on them. So if you scale up to 10 worker processes, 
the scheduler will see that and say, right, I need to add, you know, I need to schedule those jobs in the cluster. And it will see changes and, and manage that state. Uh, and again, the scheduler runs on every node, but only the leader, the natural leader, you know, is actually scheduling jobs. So you have this redundancy. If you've got three nodes, one of, you'll have a schedule on each of those nodes, but only one of those, which is the leader, will be actually scheduling jobs. And if it goes offline, then the next leader will kind of take up and start you know, scheduling those jobs. We have this uh, git receive daemon. So this is a, an SSH server specifically for git pushes. Um, it's written in Go. And you, know, you start it by passing two scripts, an auth checker script and a receiver script. And basically what it will do is for every SSH connection that comes in, it will use it, call that auth checker script that you've provided when you started the daemon. And it will pass it the user and the key that's trying to connect. And if that all script returns normal, then, that, then the connection is fine. And if it returns the non-zero exit status, then the connection is dropped. And then if the connection is uh, fine, then the, it will call this other script, the receiver script, with just the path, you know, the local path of where, the, where it's checked out the code and the commit that has actually been checked out. Um, so that's basically all that does. And so then to utilize that API, we have a, our own Flynn receive script so it uses the controller to check the person's user and key. So when the person SSH in, it will connect to the controller, say, you know, this is the key that's trying to connect. Is this person valid or not? And the controller will then decide whether that person should, you know, be allowed to push. Uh, and then it uses Heroku build packs to, to compile the code into a slug and detect, detect process types. So you might be familiar with Heroku. When you push your code, they have build packs that detect what type of code it is and then you know, do, install some dependencies and then compile it into a tarball and then put it somewhere. But then obviously Heroku then take it. We just take that process of the build packs to compile it into a slug and then we upload it somewhere. And then also once it's done that, it'll create, create an app release in the controller. So here's, here's the code, here's, it's all compiled. Here's a new release, everything's fine. So as mentioned in the last slide, we compile these slugs, which are like tarballs but we need to put them somewhere. So we need, you know, once your code's been uploaded, it's been compiled, we need to actually put that compiled slug somewhere. So we have this blob store, which is just a simple file service. You know, you can put a file, read a file, and delete a file. Uh, and there's no authentication. This is, you know, within your cluster, so you can get any file and, and change, to do what you need to do. Um, so the, the previous Flynn receive script will put things in, in the blob store. And the blob store actually uses Postgres to store the files. Um, so, it's so those files are available to any blob stores that start up. And then the last uh, component that I'll discuss is the router. Um, so the router provides you know, load balancing and routing to the services. So if you start you know, a service with 10 web processes, you're gonna probably want a router which will load balance it across those and you can decide how it does that load balance and things like that. So it uses uh, service discovery to detect the back end. So as you scale up and down your application, the router will automatically see those changes in the service discovery and just start routing to those services. Um, so it's not just for your application, it's your database as well. If you've got multiple databases that can be load balanced across, then the router can just uh, you know, load balance TCP across those services. It stores its routes in etcd for high availability. So because the, the router runs on every node, so they share the state, via etcd to say, you know, if you add a route, it's available to every, every single node in the cluster. So if you hit any node uh, via TCP, it will, it will automatically forward to the services. Okay, so that's a dis description of uh, layer, layer one. So next, I'll just um, give you a demo, which will give you an idea of, you know, bring all these things together and how you would actually use all these components to deploy an application. Okay, so this is the video I made last night, is it, is it gonna play? Okay, so, so we start off by SSH into a vagrant box. It's kind of cut off the side there anyway. So uh, Flynn comes with a vagrant box so you can just spin up and then it's got all the development tools inside there for doing things. So here I'm gonna run this script, bootstrap Flynn, 
I'm just going to start my layer zero Flynn host service discovery daemon. Then it's going to bootstrap all the other services. So it's going to start the controller, it's going to start Postgres, it's going to start the blob store, the router, and get received. So we've got this script that does all these things for us. And at the end, it just spits out this, this command at the bottom, which will add that, this new cluster to my local configuration. So I'll just copy that command. Then on my local machine, I'll just first remove any clusters I've had in my configuration uh, already, paste in this command, and so that's added this new cluster to my local configuration. So when I run Flynn now, it knows where that cluster is. So for instance, I can list the apps, and it shows some apps that are already in there that I've created via bootstrapping. So now I'm just going to um, deploy a simple Go app. So I'll cd into the, the repo there. You just see the readme, spit cut off. But it's a simple web app. So basically, it'll start up, and it'll tell, tell you what port it's running on and how many other services it can see via service discovery of the same name. And it basically refreshes every two seconds to show it, when we scale up and down, we'll see some new services come online. So if you look here in the Git remote, so you'll see this at the moment it's just origin. That'll be relevant in a second. Um, so now what we'll do is we'll ask Flynn to create an, a new application. So we say Flynn create example. And what that's done is it's gone off to the controller, said, right, create a new application. And then if we look in Flynn apps, you'll see at the top there, it's created this, this new app called example. And then if I ask the controller, right, what processes are running for this, this app? At the moment, it doesn't show anything because there's nothing running. I've just created a blank app. But now if we look in the Git remotes, before there's just origin, now there's this new Flynn remote. So this Flynn remote I can now push to, push any, my code to, and it will start off this compilation step with the Heroku build packs. So if we now go and try and push our application to Flynn, we'll see, for, you know, we've got permission denied. And that's basically because, you know, the auth checker say, well, I don't know who this person is yet. So what I'll have to do is just add my key into Flynn. So there's my key gone in. I can then ask, you know, Flynn, what keys do you know about? It's just my key there. That's fine. So now if we try and get push again, hopefully this time, you know, it, it goes through. So I've been authorized. So now what's happening is the bill packs are taking over. It's detected I'm trying to deploy a Go app. Um, so now the Go build pack is doing what it needs to do to compile my application. So it's, it's installing Go, installing some dependencies, and then it will detect what process type should be running for my application. So if you see there, it says prop file declares types web. So if you look in my prop file, you just, I've just declared there should be a web process and it should just run the Go binary, basically. Um, so, so now if I look in FlynnPS, I'll see there's, there's one process running which is my, you know, what I've just deployed. It, by default, it just run, run one process. Then I can look in the log, log of this process. So if you do Flynn log with the ID, we'll see, you know, the, it, this process is saying, right, I'm listening on this port. But obviously, you know, that's a port that I don't really want to have a look, look in the log file. I want to hit this service via the router. So first of all, I'll, I'll tell the router, right, add, add a route for my app and call it, you know, so this domain name, if you get any requests for this domain, route it to my application, and you can see I've just got this the domain pointing at the, the vagrant box in my ETC host. So if you look in Google Chrome, we can see, there we go, hello from that port, we're hitting the router, but it's, it's low balancing directly to our service. Okay, that's fine. So then we, we can scale up now. So we scale to three processes. You know, we want three of these web processes running. We do that, then we ask Flynn, right, what's running? Three processes, okay, great. We look in the browser, we can see now, we're hitting, this, we're hitting the router, but it's, it's low balancing across our you know, app. So we've got 06 there, but in a second it'll show 07. And it's just kind of refreshing every two seconds to see what's, what's online. So now we scale up to five. Look again at the processes. There's now five of them. You can see in the, in the browser straight away there's five services all online, all with different ports. Okay, so now we'll make a change. We'll just, we'll just now want to create a new release of our application. So I'm just going to go into my you know, Go file and basically going to change hello to aloha instead. So we just you know, edit that in Vim, save it. Then I'll add that to Git, make a commit, and then I will push that new commit up to Flynn. So now I'm pushing again. It's the same process. The Heroku build packs kind of step in detects, you know, I'm, I'm trying to build a Go app, install Go, things like that, but as you can see, it's still saying hello for now, 
because I've not actually created a release until that push finishes. So, you know, here's the Go app, what I've detected, install Go, install my dependencies, and then once this is all finished, it'll say, okay, create a new release. Application deployed. So now we say to Flynn, right, what's running? So what it's done now is killed my five old processes and started new fi five new ones. And if we look here, now we'll see Aloha and it's coming from all these different ports. And it's seen these five services online. So that's how you, cr you know, that's how you release your code. And here we'll just scale back down, back down to one web process. And you can see immediately there's w only one process there, but it takes a while for the services to disappear here because we, service discovery gives services a few seconds to come back online if, the, if they've disappeared. But now we can see there's one online. And that's the end of that. <coughs> so, David, can you go back to this one last slide? Okay, so yeah, try it out. You know, Flynn.io is the website. We're always in free, you know, on Freenode, hashtag Flynn. Uh, come on GitHub, check out the repo, try and deploy your applications. Uh, our team's gonna be in London from the 1st of October, so if any, any of you wanna speak to us, like, just drop us a line and we can meet up and talk about it, that's it.